Okay, let's talk about how to take great math notes. And taking great math notes is absolutely uh, essential to your success in uh, mathematics, but note-taking doesn't come that easy for uh, a lot of students. And in fact, note-taking is a uh, skill, okay? And it wasn't easy for me, and it requires a lot of practice. So what I wanna talk to you about in this video is just some practical advice on how you can improve your note-taking. Now, I do wanna say that uh, your notes may look a little bit different from someone else's notes, but they could be just as effective. So you'll develop your own personal style, but there are some basic kind of tenets to uh, taking or having great math notes. And I'm gonna be talking about all of this in just one second. But first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, I'm the founder of Tabba Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. And I'm gonna leave a link to my math help program in the description of this video. But if you are frustrated in mathematics, if you feel like you're not getting enough math instruction, or maybe you're not connecting with your teacher's teaching style, whatever the case might be, I can definitely help you out. Again, I've been teaching math for decades. And um, one thing I really pride myself on is I like to present information in a very bite-sized, clear and understandable pieces. So if you're at the middle school, high school, or even college level in terms of mathematics, I can help you out. Now, if you are preparing for any test that has a math section on it, I'm talking about things like the GED, SAT, ACT, GRE, GMAT, ASVAB, Accuplacer, uh, CLEP exam, maybe a teacher certification exam. I can help you prepare and pass those exams. If you homeschool, you definitely have to check out my homeschool math program and curriculum. And uh, speaking of notes, if you don't have any current math notes, I'm going to leave links to my math notes in the description of this video. You can... Um, check those out but of course i'm going to be talking about notes in this video and we're going to get into this right now so i want um uh, those of you out there just to, uh, put in the comment section what are some of the techniques or what are some of the things you think about when you get ready to take notes okay like what's helped you in the past or what do you struggle with put some of that in the comment section because i'm pretty sure a lot of you out there have similar um you know kind of either success techniques or similar things that trouble you but let's get into just the basics of what's going on in note taking so here is your math class and here is you you're here <laughs> you're over here and your teacher's over here right so of course i've been on both uh sides of the classroom. I've been a teacher. I am a teacher. So what's my job as a teacher? Okay, let's just think about this for a second so we can kind of put this in context. Well, my job is to give you information. Okay, my job is to give you information and I'm trying to transfer it to you. Okay, so how are you going to receive this information? Well, you're going to see it and you're going to listen, right? So you're using your, your senses, you're seeing, you're listening, but here's the deal. A lot of students will uh, watch the teacher, okay? They'll be like watching them do math and write stuff, and they're seeing what's going on, and they're like, yeah, I kind of, you know, that makes sense, and I'm hearing kind of what they're saying. So they're paying attention to some degree, but here's the missing component. If you're not writing, okay, if you're not writing this stuff down, this is one of the most important parts of your retention, okay? Your long-term retention is the writing. OK, but I get a lot of, um, you know, uh, questions from people and students are saying, well, how can I, you know, multitask? I'm trying to watch the teacher, listen to the teacher. And at the same time, I'm trying to write. It's kind of like there's too many activities. It's almost like sensory overload. Well, there is a balance of what's going on. But here's what happens for a lot of students. They they minimize how much they write. They write. They don't write enough down in their notes because they're. You know, they're focused on their other senses. They're, you know, um, watching and listening. But let me tell you what's going on here when you're in the classroom. Now, you're seeing your teacher, but guess what else you're seeing? You're, you know, uh, your eyes get distracted. Next thing you know, you're seeing an airplane fly out the window. Um, then you are listening to some students talk over here. You don't even realize all the little uh, distractions going on in the background. So writing when you're paying attention and looking at the teacher but you're actually in the state of writing what the teacher is writing down this is a high level of focus okay and that's what we're going to be talking about here so you can't be re writing things down and be distracted that's why this is kind of challenging to do so just don't be deceived here i'm just kind of setting this up we're going to be talking about math notes is that don't think that 
Well, if you are a good, you know, watcher and good listener of your teacher, that that is sufficient uh, in terms of you not having to take math notes. Okay, I'm telling you right now, uh, you absolutely need to take math notes. And now let's go ahead and get into some of the techniques uh, that can help you um, out here. So the first thing is you have to be, before we even get into these uh, four little things here, uh, one, you have to be ready. Actually, let's go ahead and put this up here. We, you have to be ready for class, okay? Ready and organized. That is the first thing you have to be. So you need a notebook. You need all your material. You can't be scrambling around in your backpack or anything else, you know, or in a rush. So before you even get into a class, if you want to take great math notes, you have to be ready, prepared for class. So this is kind of like the obvious common sense stuff. But a lot of you, you know, may misplace your materials and whatnot. You got to do all this pre-work before you get to uh, class because you're trying to figure it out while class is going on. You're already behind, um, you know, in terms of being um, able to take successful math notes. So first things first, be ready for class, have your materials ready. And, um, you know, there's other uh, videos I can make on that, but this is really kind of common sense. I would suggest in terms of your math notes, some of you may uh, like one notebook uh, per class. I personally um, think that's smarter. In other words, one folder for math, not like one gigantic folder where you have math, science, and everything else. Just one dedicated folder, like a, one of those uh, three-ring binder type folders where you put uh, loose leaf papers. Whatever, if you like that, that's fine. Stick with a particular technique. I don't really care stylistically what you do, but just have one dedicated folder per class. Okay, that's I highly suggest that. Okay, so once you're ready for class, here's the thing. You have to be in a mental state of focus, okay? Whoops, let me go ahead and just erase this here. You have to be ready to focus. In other words, you have to be telling yourself, I need to get ready here to focus on the teacher, okay? Because note-taking is really a... Uh, uh, a game of focus. Okay. So you have to get ready to focus. So how do you get ready to focus? Well, you're going to have to be prepared for this activity. So you have to mentally say, okay, my job as a student is to pay attention to the teacher. And in order to do that, I'm going to have to stop thinking or being distracted about other, uh, being distracted about other things that are going on in my mind. So you're going to have to start thinking about other stuff that's, um, that you're currently thinking on, the teacher is going to be coming up in the front of the classroom and start teaching. If you're thinking about your next class or your previous class where you just took a test or something else, you have to try to settle your mind. Now, it's, uh, you know, we're all humans. It's not easy to do this, but the better you can get yourself in a state of focus, mentally prepared to receive this information, the better off you're going to be. So what I would uh, suggest is try to... Um, to the best of your ability, uh, compartmentalize your your thoughts. In other words, be like, okay, um, I got to deal with something. You know, maybe I have to study for this particular test that's coming up later in the day. I'll think about that after you know I get out of math class or between my break or whatever the case is. But when the teacher is getting ready to start, uh, you know, to uh, share their instruction, uh, you don't want to miss anything. Okay, and it's the little tiny things that you could miss if you're not highly focused that can make your notes, you know, the difference between great notes and bad notes. And I'm telling you right now, I've been teaching math for decades, and the number one correlation I've seen for success in terms of mathematics is all those students who've gotten excellent grades, A pluses and A's, and their grades uh, in terms of math, all of them had excellent math notes. Okay, I can, really can't think of many exceptions. However, the, the number one trend I've seen for students who've done poorly in math is they're disorganized and they don't have uh, great notes. Um, you know, it kind of goes hand in hand. So anyways, get yourself in a state of focus, all right? Try to block out uh, other things that are going on in your mind when you are when you move into not only math class, but any other class. Okay, so once you're in a state of focus, all right, it's going to be you know, easier for you to pay attention and not miss anything. Now, as a teacher is sharing information, it's, it's going to be a balance of um, you listening, watching, and writing, okay? So what I'm going to suggest to you is that you should ask questions, okay? If you feel like that your teacher is going too fast and you're getting lost, okay, you're already in a high state of focus. You're trying to write 
and keep up and listen. Okay, the only way you can kind of do all that is if you're highly focused. But if you're getting lost, stop, stop, and raise your hand and ask your teacher. Uh, can you repeat that? Um, what was that? What did you mean over there? What did you write over there? Do not remain lost. Okay, the worst thing you could do is just write and don't uh, and be like, okay, I'm just I'm kind of lost, and not ask questions. Uh, your teacher wants you to ask questions, so don't feel like you're going to bother your teacher by raising your hand. So if it, if your teacher's going too quick, now you can't constantly be like, hey, slow down, Mr. Teacher or Mrs. Teacher, like slow, go slower, go slower. No, you have to try to keep up with your uh, the pace of your teacher, and your teacher's trying to present information in a in a way where you know a good professional teachers know a pace that's fairly comfortable for students to be able to get. But you have to be in a state of focus. But if you get lost any time during the instruction, raise your hand and try to clear things up. So get comfortable with raising questions. If you're shy, okay, if you feel like, oh, I don't want to raise my hand or ask questions, get out of that habit, okay? So remember, um, ask questions, okay, as your teacher instructs, especially, or as your teacher is teaching, especially if you feel like you're getting lost with the content. Now, Let's move on to this other uh, kind of concept of note-taking, and that is follow-up and clean-up. Now, this kind of goes to a lot of what people say, hey, you know, I just can't write everything down. The teacher's teaching. There's just too much uh, information coming out. Listen, I kind of get that, okay? So that is, you know, something that um, can happen. You may not get everything uh, that you want want it in into during class time into your notes. So you're going to have to do kind of what I call follow up and clean up phase. So how can you kind of clean up your notes? Well, you take the best notes you possibly can during class, but a good uh, technique is to have like a uh, a friend that takes great notes and you can compare notes later on. You know, working in groups, doing your homework or whatnot is an excellent technique. Another thing you could do is go to your teacher, maybe after school. You're going to, you know, I mean, this stuff requires extra effort. If you want to be great in math, you know, you're going to have to take a little bit of initiative. So if you don't feel like you got 100% of the notes in that particular class, this shouldn't be every day, by the way, okay? But if you feel like there was a lot of note taking going on, you're going to have to follow up and clean up and you have to kind of Really make sure that you got everything you uh, you needed into your notes. So you should, you know, um, ask your friend, hey, what did you get in your notes? You know, or go to your teacher, whatever the case might be. And that kind of brings me to this last kind of um, thing that you should, all students should be doing is why did you take the notes in the first place? Well, you take your notes to study from. So as you are studying from your notes, you're reviewing what you wrote down. You need to review and verify that in fact you wrote the right things down, okay? Again, how can you do this? Well, you could work with the, um, another student who's you know doing really well in math, but you, uh, most importantly is you could do two uh, things here. One, use your teacher, okay? Go to your teacher. Hey, uh, here's my notes, uh, teacher. Am I missing anything? You know, I'm getting the problems. I'm not doing well with the practice problems. So your teachers could be like, oh, no, you're missing this this step in your notes, okay? Another thing you could do is use your textbook, all right? Use your textbook because your teacher is working off a textbook and kind of like bolster, enhance your notes. But remember, your notes are your own personal kind of record of, of what you need to um, know the procedures and look at these example prompts. And this is a really big thing. Any uh, you know teacher that's a you know been teaching for a long time is going to be giving you plenty of examples of how to solve problems and, and everything else. You need to have all these examples in your notes. Okay, but you have to take initiative. And there's going to be um, classes where there's just a lot of information coming at you, and you're not you're going to feel like okay, I wrote everything down, but I don't understand everything I wrote down. That's normal. You're going to have to ask as much questions, but sometimes class is going to run out on you. You know, you're going to have to move on to your next class. So you have to follow up. You have to review. And, you know, your notes are dy uh, dynamic. Okay. So just remember, note taking is a skill. All right. It's a skill, but it's your responsibility to take the best notes you can. The better your notes, the better off you're going to be. But you want to use your notes. Okay. And I'm going to leave you with one last. Uh, major, major tip here, okay, for those of you out there that 
or anywhere along the spectrum of learning math. So let's just kind of look. Let's just take a, a high school student, for example. So high school students, will, they'll, uh, typically in their freshman year, they'll study algebra. Then you go on to geometry in your sophomore year. Then you'll do algebra two, maybe pre-calculus. This is fairly typical. So let's say you're taking great algebra notes, okay? And you did uh, really well in algebra. Matter of fact, let's say you got an A in algebra, and now it's summertime. What do you do with these math notes? What do you do with this material? Okay, you're like, well, I'm I'm done with algebra. Maybe I should throw all this stuff in the trash. Okay, do not do that. Do not throw your notes away. Okay. You only get rid of your notes when you are done taking all the math you ever need to take in your life, okay? So if uh, when you work hard at taking great math notes, keep them as a reference. You're going to need uh, to know some algebra and geometry, and then your algebra notes, if you uh, kept them, are gonna, is going to help you out in Algebra 2. And by the way, if you have great Algebra and Geometry notes, these are things you can use to study for like the SAT and ACT. So what I'm trying to tell you is this. Uh, Take pride in your notes. Your notes are very, very valuable. Do not get rid of them once you're finished with a particular math class. Okay. The only time you get rid of your notes is when you are, you know, absolutely certain you are done learning mathematics. Okay. So, anyways, hopefully this uh, video was, you know, useful in some ways. I mean, you know, I could have gone into more specific mechanics and whatnot, but I wanted to kind of keep it general because a lot of you are already doing a pretty good job taking notes in your own personal way. But again, the main idea is here is that, you know, your teacher is trying to transfer information to you, okay? And it's just not enough to watch them and listen to them and understand, okay? A lot of students are like, oh, wow, I'm seeing what's going on. I'm understanding. You have to engage in writing. That means you're going to have to up your focus. That means you're going to have to be ready. So hopefully, again, this video was useful. And if that is the case, go ahead and consider smashing that a like button that would be uh, useful to me as well and if you're new to my youtube channel um hopefully you'll consider subscribing i've been on youtube for 10 plus years I have over a thousand plus math videos uh basic math to advanced math i do these occasional videos on math kind of motivation or skills and whatnot but most of my videos are going to be actually solving you know uh problems and talking about uh, various math topics so again i span from arithmetic all the way to calculus and everything in between so if you like my teaching style please take advantage of all my content that i've posted and will be posting but my best math help will always be within my math help program okay so with that being said i definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures thank you for your time and have a great day